WWDC 2020 just wrapped up last week, and we'll take a look at what Apple has up its sleeve for HomeKit up next. Welcome, and thanks for watching. I'm Ray, and if you haven't yet but are interested in the HomeKit Smart Home platform and related Apple tech, please hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified when I post new content. And if you find the following video useful, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. I very much appreciate it. WWDC is Apple's yearly developers conference that all us Mac fans look forward to each year because it shows us a sneak peek at what Apple has cooked up for its operating systems for iPhone, iPad, Macs, and Apple TVs. Uh, due to COVID-19, this was the first year the conference has been held virtually. For us non-developers, nothing much has changed since I typically just watch the keynote online and hope for new beta software to drop. And drop they did. And no sooner that the keynote was over that I started receiving invites for all the beta software they presented during the keynote. I got one for iOS 14, macOS Big Sur, tvOS, watchOS 7, and the elusive HomePod beta, which I believe is the first HomePod beta software being available outside of Apple's walls. Um, I was like a kid in the candy store, but a possibly dangerous candy store because being beta software, it can prove to be pretty detrimental to our Apple devices. Since I like to live life on the edge, after my workday was over, I installed all that beta software, save macOS Big Sur, on all my daily drivers. Uh, dumb, right? But luckily so far, the betas have proved to be pretty stable so far in my testing. I did install macOS Big Sur on a secondary iMac, my wife's, and so far she hasn't complained, so I think I'm good there. Uh, I'll take a look at some of the new HomeKit functionality in iOS 14 and related betas, but since I'm bound to Apple's confidentiality agreement when I agreed to be a beta tester, I'll limit that discussion to things they've already publicly demonstrated during the keynote. If you'd like to watch what Apple presented regarding HomeKit at WWDC this year, you can view the video on Apple.com. And the HomeKit presentation starts a bit after the 59 minute mark during their segment on privacy. Craig Federighi starts by explaining that with the current climate, more people are spending time at home. And now more than ever, Apple's goal is for devices that just work. Apple's three goals are ease of use, privacy, and better together to provide a seamless experience in the Apple ecosystem. After Craig's introduction, he passes the HomeKit baton over to Yaw Kaysen, the senior engineer responsible for HomeKit software. Yaw continues with the importance of ease of setup and end-to-end -end encryption, and talks about an alliance with Google, Amazon, and other industry leaders in the smart home space to make interoperability seamless across the industry. This connected home over IP initiative is great news since oftentimes we'll see smart home products offered with Google and Amazon integration, leaving HomeKit behind. But with this new alliance, hopefully it will now be trivial to also add HomeKit compatibility. Uh, the protocol is anticipated to be ready by the end of this year, and maybe, just maybe, we'll see Ring and Nest devices on HomeKit. Time will tell, but it really goes a long way in demonstrating that Apple is committed to the HomeKit platform and the smart home integrations it's built on. Yeah, then goes through some of the updates in the Home app, which include a simplified UI when adding accessories to HomeKit and some suggested automations. There's also a simplified status section atop the favorites in the Home app, which displays devices that need your immediate attention. I got my phone right here with iOS 14 installed. Let's see what that looks like right now. So here we are on the iPhone. I have iOS 14 installed. As you can see, I have the weather widget and the podcast widget on my home screen. Let's go ahead and go into the home app and you can see the status area right above the favorite scenes. And here it shows me the status of accessories. Looks like I have two accessories not responding. Um, temperature right next to it. If I long press on the temperature, I can see the climate of the rooms in the home. Um, and it'll show me the temperature in each room. In the hallway, you can see I, there I have a Onvis motion sensor there that also has humidity and temperature. So it also, it's also showing the, me the humidity in the hallway. We go next, we have the security system, which is right now um, set to away. And I can disarm it and turn it off. Um, right after the security system, it shows which uh, windows are open or doors wherever i have contact sensors it'll show me what windows and doors open if i long press it looks like right now i just have the bathroom window open but if i long press that it'll show me which windows or doors and whatever rooms um, are open 
I have the light on, I have four outlets on. It's showing me motion in two rooms, the loft, backyard, and I have two. <laughs> I have two motion sensors in the backyard, so it's showing me motion in two rooms or two areas. And it also shows occupancy. Uh, loft presence is triggered and the family room presence is triggered. And that is the um, status area in the home app. So as you can see, the status section will give us a quick glance at our smart home devices and enable us to interact with them directly without scrolling through a long list of favorites. We can check if doors are unlocked and lock them and see which windows are open before leaving the house. It's actually a pretty nice convenience addition to the home app. Then we turn to lights and HomeKit now has the ability to automatically change the color temperature for lights throughout the day with adaptive lighting. So for those of us with smart bulbs, we'll no longer need to go into the native app and set up different scenes for different color temperatures suitable for whatever time of day it is. HomeKit will do that for us automatically. This is a really cool feature, but as I've said in the past, the price of smart bulbs really needs to come down for this to be wallet friendly. For me personally, I've gone with smart light switches as opposed to smart bulbs, mostly because of savings. My budget and my wallet just does not justify the added expense for smart bulbs throughout my home. Next, we take a look at cameras. And now HomeKit Secure Video compatible cameras can also define activity zones. Finally, this was a feature sorely missing from the first iteration of HomeKit Secure Video and an important feature because now we can define areas that we want monitored for motion and just as importantly, exclude certain areas like the street or our neighbor's yard so that we can minimize false alerts. Uh, another feature Apple is bringing to cameras is face recognition. HomeKit cameras and video doorbells will deliver rich notifications and use the information from our photo library to tag family and friends for face recognition. And the face recognition will also extend to HomePods, where Siri will now be able to announce who is at the door. Uh, let's go ahead and see how we set those features up on the iPhone. And I'll go ahead and pick up my iPhone. And again, on my iPhone with iOS 14, let's go ahead and go back to the Home app. And one thing I want to point out before we set up that uh, camera is the Home icon in the upper right now lists all the rooms you have. And here's where you actually um, access home settings and room settings and edit the screen. So you have to click edit the screen to get the icons into the into the jiggle motion so you can rearrange them if you want. So that's really cool. It's actually a lot cleaner than it was before. Um, let's go ahead and go back down to cameras. We'll select the entry camera and I'm going to choose the gear icon to go into settings. And as you can see, they, they've kind of um, changed the organization of things. Recording options is now under a separate kind of tab and this is where you can set your cameras to stream or stream and record or not stream at all or turn them off. Um, we can go there and right under recording options we have face recognition and we can turn on and enable face recognition from there. You can see a lot of <laughs> empty um, unknown thumbnails because I haven't uh, put them as myself which most of those are. Um, and here below that we can set up activity zones and Apple really makes it easy to set up activity zones. If you've set up activity zones on native apps, other native apps like the, the Ring app, it can be a little cumbersome or in the um, Logitech app when, uh, in the native Logitech app for Circle 2s, it was a little cumbersome to set those up. Here, Apple really makes it simple. You just click a node anywhere and you just start adding those and you can move them around and you can really click out a detailed activity zone I'm going to click out my front yard and the front sidewalk so I can see if anyone's creeping on that sidewalk. And we can close it. And there's my activity zone. And it covers my front lawn, my driveway, and my uh, walkway up to the front door. And I can also invert the zone if I wanted to, if I wanted, if I had a different kind of selection for that. I'm going to hand it revert to the original activity zone I, I laid out. And I'm going to choose Done. And now we can see that there is one activity zone under select activity zones. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll up a little bit to the family room home pod. Let's long press that. Scroll all the way down. And now we can see a setting to chime doorbell. So there we can set the home pod to chime the doorbell and announce who's at the door if we have a HomeKit Secure Video enabled doorbell, which I'm hoping will come on the market soon. So that's how you set those up on the iPhone.
Additionally, with Apple TV, we'll be able to have a camera pop up on screen when someone rings the doorbell. Also, all cameras will be viewable on Apple TV with tvOS 14 so that they can be quickly accessed in the Home tab under the Control Center. Uh, let's actually take a look at the Apple TV equipped TV behind me and let's see how tvOS 14 works there. So this is tvOS 14 on my Apple TV and I'll go ahead and choose the TV icon on the remote. And if we scroll down to the Home button, we can see all the cameras that are available. And we can even scroll through those. And these are all the cameras in my home. And let's go ahead and go back to that entry camera and choose that. If we choose it, we can go full screen and we're immediately presented with a live view of what's happening in front of my home right now. And this happens to be a Eufy Cam 2 in the front of the home. Let's go ahead and go out and let's go look at the backyard camera. Where is that? Here we go. And this is a Circle 2 that I have installed in the backyard. So we can access all our cameras full screen. And below our cameras, we have our favorite scenes and we can turn them on and off through here as well. So actually a nice feature set available on Apple TV and really, really long overdue. Works great and quite honestly, functionality that really should have been there from day one. Uh, I'd like to point out the emphasis on video doorbells with these updates and Apple's specific mention of doorbells during the presentation on HomeKit. I'm feeling confident that we will finally have some consumer choices for video doorbells released hopefully within the next year. And if I'm allowed to dream a little, what I'd really like to see is an Apple designed video doorbell with a true depth camera system to enable Face ID so that the video doorbell will allow unlocking of a smart lock that most of us already have installed in our doors. Again, they also did introduce face recognition, but third-party cameras don't have the true depth camera system nor the neural engine necessary for full real-time face ID. Um, and that would add a crucial layer of security. Um, well, I'll continue dreaming. <laughs> and overall, this year's WWDC was a good one for HomeKit. As I've watched these over the years, I always hope for some mention of HomeKit, and this year Apple did not disappoint. There were a couple features I was hoping for that they'd ask, add to HomeKit Secure Video, one being the increase of the five camera limit, since I've long since passed that number of cameras in my home, and two, an increase of the resolution from the current 1080p to at least 2K as we are seeing more 2K enabled cameras on the market today. Uh, hopefully Apple will address those shortcomings in a future update, but for now I'm pretty happy with what I saw. So what were your impressions of the HomeKit segment during WWDC? Uh, were you happy with what Apple announced or was there something missing that you had hoped for? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear your feedback. And with that, I will wrap up my look at WWDC and what Apple has in store for HomeKit users in the coming year. So until the next one, please take care and be safe out there.